We're talking athletics with new AD Kevin OZ next on Conversations. Welcome to Conversations. I'm your host, John Nelson. In the history of the AISD athletic wise, there have been five ADs Mayfield Workman, James Hyden, I.C. Little, O.J. Kemp, and the newest face, certainly no stranger to the Arlington School District, Kevin O.Z. Kevin, appreciate you coming down. Thank you. What do you think when I mention some of those names in the past? Uh, honestly, just got chills down my spine because it's those, all those names mean a lot to me and a lot to my family, and I know a lot to this community, and just uh, being able to live up to their, fill in their shoes. Kevin's dad, Ken O.Z., the longtime successful coach at Sam Houston, took many teams to the playoffs. A lot of people have asked me, Kevin, how's your dad and how's retirement? <laughs> oh, he's great. He's got a handful of grandkids to keep up with. Um, uh, one just graduated from Texas Tech, one, one of his grandkids is getting ready to graduate from Texas Tech, and then uh, my two boys. Um, so he keeps up with them, keeps up with all their sporting events, but he's enjoying retirement. Uh, playing for head coach Michael Bryant at Arlington High, what, what are your memories uh, of that uh, segment at Arlington? I remember we had some great teams, um, some very unbelievable moments, and I remember our coaches really instilling a, a uh, our work ethic, ethic in us. We weren't always the most talented team on paper, and uh, they instilled a work ethic in doing things the right way and how to how to win and uh, succeed doing things the right way. Kevin, what were the circumstances that uh, led you to come back to uh, Arlington? Well, I had a, a wonderful job at South Lake Carroll. I'd been there five and a half years, and we won a lot of a lot of games and really enjoyed my time there. When things started happening here uh, with Coach Kemp announcing her retirement, you know, I had people who I grew up with here who were calling asking if I'd be interested. And I actually talked to Coach Kemp on September the 5th at the Martin game out at AT&T. And we talked for a long time. And I've always respected and admired Coach Kemp and, and her legacy here in Arlington and really leaned on her wisdom. And, and you know, it was kind of that was kind of the the time where I went home and told my wife, I said, I really need to check into this position because I, I feel we're being led back home. And the way that it all transpired, the, the only way that I can really honestly put it out there is that the Lord led us back home to serve the community that we uh, grew up in. My wife's a Martin grad. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> um, I left a what many would consider the best athletic director job in the nation, high school-wise, to come home to serve our kids and serve our coaches and our community. You were the AD also at Duncanville yes. and also at South Lake, but that's a, a district with one high school and very few junior highs. Now, with the AISD, there are six high schools and 13 junior highs, so it's going to be a little bit different, and uh, your Monday through Friday is, I imagine, going to be quite busy. Quite busy. Um, I, I, I believe even though it's a larger scale and, and many more high schools and, and middle schools and things, there are certain processes in place um, that can be implemented in athletic programs and replicated. And I believe the focus is going to be on quality coaching and um, really trying to find some innovative ways to keep students participating in our program and keep our programs, get it, getting our programs to a high level and keeping them competitive at a high level. So <clears throat> the bigger picture, um, it is a, uh, a different job in a sense, but in many aspects it's the same because the processes are the same, just need to be replicated. Yeah. Your first hire was to fill the vacancy at Lamar, and uh, Laban DeLay, who had been an assistant at South Grand Prairie, uh, is the new head coach. What goes into that process? We... Um, we opened the job. Uh, the job had been open shortly after the football season, so even prior to my hire in, in, in Arlington, and the job had been posted. We took uh, applications. We screened applications, and we brought in eight people to interview over a course of two days, and we had a committee. Um, and Coach DeLay wound up being the unanimous choice from that committee. And it was quite a blessing, personally, 
uh, for me, but also I think for Arlington because Coach DeLay is an Arlington product as well. Uh, he went to South Davis Elementary, went to Bailey <laughs> Junior High, and, and he and I went to school together at Arlington High. And I think on the surface people look at that and go, well, you know, bringing his buddies in, but he really out of eight, and we had eight very strong candidates, um, rose to the top in the interview process. The second interview process with, was with uh, our, our folks over at the administration building and the superintendent and really blew people away, plus the same heart that I've had about coming home, back home to the community to serve. And I think it's a win all the way around. I think it's going to be a really neat thing. Yeah, I think it was an excellent hire. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned your dad, and there was kind of a surprise at uh, AT&T Stadium back in September that caught everybody by surprise. My dad turned 70 um, in, in, in September, and <clears throat> we wanted to do something special for him, and we, we, we surprised him. What we did was... I reached out to some of his players at Sam Houston that I still keep in touch with and some of the former coaches here and uh, we surprised him on the field during the Martin game. Southlake played right after the Martin game so he was there for both games. He didn't know any different and I, I dragged him down on the field and he was kind of upset by that because he was comfortable <laughs> in his spot and I made him go on the field and he was kind of grumpy about that but man when he saw his players coming through uh, the Mark Claytons, the Brandon Hassels, uh, BK Bird, you know, and those guys coming on the field, man, he, he lit up like a Christmas tree. And, um, you know, James Hyden, Coach Little, Eddie Peach showed up. I mean, it was really neat. Billy Stewart, you know, names from the past. It was really neat, uh, a, a neat, neat event. And that was, like I said, that was prior to me being involved with this job. And those guys, being around those guys, and seeing the community uh, mm -hmm. effect there really impacted me as well. Kevin, statewide, the uh, Texas High School Coaches Association has done away with the all-star football games and the basketball games over the summer. Will that be missed, and what, what are the long-term effects, do you think, for that? I think they'll be missed a little bit. Um, really, the ramification that, I, that concerns me is the, the NCAA ruling that caused the Texas High School Coach Association to do away with the All-Star Games really is what concerns me on the, on the long term because the NCAA made the ruling that you couldn't have college coaches at a conference with an All-Star Game attached to it. And at the Texas High School Coaches Conference in the summer, all the Texas college coaches come and speak and they network and that's where we make the network connections um, to help get our kids recruited. And when NCAA comes in and says, because you are hosting an All-Star game separate, uh, separate, at a separate venue but tied to your conference, the NCAA coaches can't attend, that's a big issue for high school coaches because, like I said, that's where we make the connections and really, really network with those guys. So I think short term, the choice for the coaches association to do away with the All-Star games and to be able to have the college coaches come back and attend the conference is the right thing. I think the historical value of the All-Star Games and the, the impact on kids is, it, I don't like that part of it. I wish we could somehow have, have the All-Star Games. Yeah, a lot of people set their calendar aside just for yeah. those uh, three or four days. Your goals before the end of the school year here? Well, we're busy uh, evaluating every aspect of our program. Um, I just I told some of our coaches the other day that our biggest focus, in my opinion, right now needs to be uh, building the relationships, especially at the middle school level, junior high level, because that's where we, we have some work to do there. And then going into, um, going into the summertime, coming up with a plan, we need to start looking at things, how we can be innovative in keeping our, our student athletes competing at a high level and keeping them involved in our program. And um, on top of that, my focus has been involved with the new construction projects, which are very exciting. Mm -hmm. So all that is, a, I, I wake up every day and, and I've never felt like I've had to go to work. <laughs> I'm just having the, the time of my life. Um, usually during the spring we have personnel, things that we have to focus on in terms of coaches getting promoted or, or leaving the district or whatnot, and that usually takes up a lot of time in the spring. Um, we did just post 
two new assistant athletic director positions, which we'll be uh, interviewing and hiring for those next month. And it's really what building some capacity to be able to handle all these different projects. Kevin, how will those assistant AD jobs be split up? And talk about the indoor facilities that will be used not only for football. Yeah, the, um, the district and the communities made a tremendous uh, effort to try to build support for a program and also build facilities for a program, which was very exciting to me and everybody in the community should be very, very excited. I'm very thankful for that, number one. Uh, the two new assistant athletic director positions that, that just posted, uh, what I foresee for them, one to be um, a liaison with the boys head coaches and one to be a liaison with the girls head coaches. The one listed as the girls um, administrator will also serve as the Title IX coordinator for the athletic program. So making sure that we are um, not only in compliance, but also doing what's right for all programs. And, and my vision is to have all sports, both genders, all levels competing at a high level. And um, to do that, we have to build the capacity with, with two very solid people acting as assistant athletic directors. There's also some other duties that uh, they'll be in charge of as a liaison. Um, for example, the step teams. So we have a great step team program in Arlington ISD, and our cheer programs also fall under the athletic program. So we have those posted. Um, like I said, I hope we can interview and get someone hired this spring. I think we'll, we'll get some very strong interest on that. On the um, multi-purpose athletic centers, man, I'm so excited about these because it's gonna host these facilities at each high school uh, are going to host many different sport, sports, boys and girls. They're going to have um, just state-of-the-art weight rooms that we've been lacking at most of our campuses. And of course, the turf area that will be accessible. Um, multiple sports and multiple organizations will be able to use. And if anyone has ever seen LD Bell or Euless Trinity's indoor facilities, and when you walk in, one of the first things you notice are drop-down nets that are able to section off the, the turf area in the, in, the, in the fourths so multiple groups can, can use the facility at the same time. And the other thing you notice at L.D. Bell and Trinity's are the markings on the field. They have baseball and softball markings already on the turf. So when you section that off, you could um, have an indoor baseball or softball practice mm -hmm. and not have to set out you know, uh, cones and things. That's very exciting. Um, uh, and that facility, those facilities on each campus I see being used 7 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night every day. So um, it, I know the band, uh, we're, we're planning on platform, uh, platforms in each facility so the band directors can have observation deck camera deck, things like that. So, You really are coming in at a good time. Great and time. I would imagine, if I were in the middle schools right now, even in the sixth grade, I would be encouraged for the next five or six years. I mean, I would really be encouraged to uh, take up an activity knowing that there's a center that's gonna be open year round. Yeah, we're, we're making, um, uh, and that's part of the coordination you, I talked about happening this spring and the summer, really trying to make an emphasis on um, the vertical alignment all the way down to kindergarten. Um, elementary and secondary PE also fall under the athletic directors program and really want to start doing some cross uh, educational stuff to get that true vertical alignment all the way down to the kindergarten. So the idea being, you know, if I go to uh, this elementary, I look forward to being a Martin Warrior or Lamar Viking or whatever it is, all the way through uh, K through 12. What about gymnastics and wrestling? I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. There are plans within this bond to build a facility for uh, an aquatics facility, a wrestling facility, a gymnastics facility. Uh, we actually are starting to meet this week, kind of initial meetings. Those will not come online for uh, several more years. The, the athletic complex for gymnastics, wrestling, aquatics, but the planning is starting to happen this week. Um, the multi-purpose centers on each high school campus, uh, we're looking to try to break ground this summer 
and try to have those completed within 12 months. Kevin, appreciate the visit Thank and uh, welcome back to the area. Thank you very much. Well, that's the word on athletics. Certainly exciting days ahead in the AISD. That's our show this week on Conversations. Join us again next time.